So in this video, I want to focus on naming aromatics. Uh, uh, and we're going to use the idea of O, N, and P. Now, I know that actually in order one, you will actually, you know, see, you will actually come up on some sort of these names and you actually don't you know what the O, you know, oh, I'm sorry, not this, this should not be an N, but an M. You, you get up with this O and the M and the P, and you're like, well, what the hell does it stand for? Well, we're going to go over what it means with naming these structures. So we already learned the parent aromatics that we should know. Right. So let's look at some examples and see how we can name these. Well, okay. Well, so let's look at the first one. So what if I have an aromatic like this? Uh, I have this, you know, OCH3 here, uh, and I have the seal here. The first thing that we should know, and I'm going to let you know right now, my O is one, two substituted, one, two substituted. So with one being the parent carbon, right so with one having the substituent that that is the parent name and we're going to talk we're going to talk about what this means so o is one two m is one three p uh is one four substituted which means that one again having the parent name that we're going to the fun parent functional group and the substituent being four away parent functional group substituent being three away uh, parent functional group substituent being one away, all right? So, and maybe these are not three away, but again, one away, two away, and then three away, okay? And we're going to talk about what this means. So, again, what what would we call this? What would we call this, right? We know that, okay, well, without this chlorine here, this is anisole, all right? Uh, but how do we know which one gets the you know, is this chlorobenzene anisole or anisole chlor? You know, who knows? Well, with that being said, we got to go to what is called the, the, the functional group hierarchy for uh, naming uh, for naming aromatics. OK, and um, the, the, I'm going to list them in, 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 in order. Right. So the first one that gets priority is carboxylic acids. So we have carboxylic acids. Then we have, you know, esters, not that we need to know it right now. We have esters, then in number three, we have acid chlorides. Uh, number four, we have um, you know, amides. Uh, number five, we have nitriles. All right, so number five, we have nitriles. Uh, number six, we have aldehydes all the heights. Uh, number seven, we have ketones. Eight, we have alcohols. We have alcohols. Uh, nine, we have thiols. Uh, uh, 10, we have amines. Right. 10, we have amines. And then going all the way down, I'm going to skip a couple of the less important ones here uh, uh, so going all the way down we have let's say 11 we have some sort of r group and usually you know we'll talk about ch3s or stuff like that so that's what we mean by r groups um so we have we have r groups and then we have actually the alkyl halides alkyl halides and then the last one is this nitro group here right and this is NO2, all right? Now, I skipped, uh, going from amine here, I skipped a few ones that, you know, like alkanes, alkynes, uh, those are not, we, we don't really care about those at the moment, but this is the hierarchy chart. And uh, the priority increases as we go up. So carboxylic acids gets number one priority, esters, number two, et cetera. All right. So knowing this case, we know that our halogens or alkyl halides, you know, or halogen, uh, yeah, and that shouldn't be alkyl halides, but halogens, same thing. Um, they're at the bottom of the priority, uh, priority list. Now, if we look at this or R groups or above, so that means that the parent name for this is anisole, right? Now, here's what we distinguish as the OH and the anisole. So this is our parent functional group. So therefore, this is one, two substituted. So therefore, this will be O chloro anisole, right? Anisole being our parent, and then the substituent chloro. 
So, so this is how we will name that compound. Now, uh, what about this? So we have this OCH3 here, and then we have this bromine bonded here. Well, again, look at my pattern. From the parent, we know this is anisole again, but this is one, two, three. So this is one, three substitute. So this has to be M bromo anisole. All right, and again, our parent name comes first, and then we put in, uh, well, not our parent name, but our substituent comes first, and then we put in our parent name. So that's embromanosol. Now, what about this one? All right, what would we name this compound here? All right, we have a nitrate group and we have this carboxylic acid. Well, remember, we said that carboxylic acids get number one priority groups. Uh, this is the number one priority functional group in terms of naming hierarchies. So that means that this is benzoic acid, and let's see how it's substituted. Well, we have one, two, three, right? So this is three away from our parent functional group. So this is uh, this is M nitro benzoic acid. All right. So that's so that so that's how we name uh, you know these compounds. Now, what about this? All right, what would we name this? Well, again, our parent is anisole. Our alkyl halides are all the way down at the bottom, or our groups are above it. So these get you know, priority group naming over this alkyl halides here. Now let's look at how to substitute this. One, two, three, four. Its para is one for substituted, so therefore this is para. Well, what's my substituent? Iodine, so this is para, and that shouldn't be P, but it should be P Ido I P Ido anisole. All right, so that's how we would name uh, that compound here. Now, let's look at a couple more examples. So, what if I wanted to name this here? What would be my, what would be the name for this compound here? Well, again, I have an R group here. I have an alkyl halide here. R group gets number one priority. Well, what do we know about this function just without the chlorine? The parent name for this is toluene. Now, it's one, two substituted. So, therefore, this is O chloro toluene. All right. Now, how would we name this? What's my, right? How would we name this compound here? Well, priority groups. This is an amine. This is an amine. If I look at my chart here, amine has a higher functional uh, priority group than my alkyl halides. So therefore, the parent for this is actually aniline. So excluding these two chlorines and bromines here, uh, looking at the aromatic alone, this is aniline. All right. So, well, we always want to give or substituent the lowest number possible, right? So this is aniline, lowest number possible, we have to count from this end. So this would be one, two, uh, three, four. All right, this will give my uh, substituent the lowest uh, possible numbers. Now, we can't just use M, O, and P in this situation because we have uh, three groups. Right? That only works for two for two, for two two groups on the, 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 the benzene ring. So therefore, bromine comes before chlorine, so this is four bromo, uh, two chloro aniline. All right, so that's how we would name this. So now, what if we wanted? What if they gave us something like this? Uh, uh, how how would we name? How would we name this compound here? Well, I'm sorry, guys. I, I forgot to put up. Uh, uh, the SO2, the, the SO3 functional group. Uh, 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 
So I'm gonna skip a little bit of steps here. But right after out right after my aldehydes, I have an SO3. Alright, so I have my aldehydes. Have my SO3s, then my uh yeah, yeah let's not do that. Alright, so we have this SO3 and uh this chlorine here. Well, we should know by now that alkyl halides comes at the bottom, right? So therefore, this SO3 group is going to be by parent name. But what do we know about this, excluding the chlorine? This is benzene sulfonic acid. Now, how is it substituted? One, two, three. So this is M. So this is M chloro chloro benzene sulfonic acid. That's a long name. All right, so that's how we would name the compound. Uh, again, nothing, no, nothing hard. Uh, let's look at the last one. Uh, nothing hard. Just recognizing the patterns, knowing your your hierarchy, and it, it will come fairly uh, similar. Uh, it will come fairly easy for you. So how would we name this? Well, this is some R group, so we really don't care about it. This is our parent group here. This is aniline. So therefore, where's my, how is it substituted? This is one, two. So therefore this has to be O. Well, what is this? One, two, this is an ethyl group. So this is O ethyl aniline. All right. And, and this is, this is how we name, you know, aromatic structures.